This is the M1 Abrams, a staple in the US Army since 1980s. It weighs 62 metric tons and has a gun 5.28 meters in length and can carry 42 rounds of pure destructive firepower. This is an Inquisitor, a character in Ragnarok Online who uses their fists to beat enemies in the name of God. What is the difference here? Well, one of them is completely impenetrable to normal firearms and have the firepower to level a city. That's right, we're talking about the Inquisitor! Hey, this is Velveteen or Cottontail and Shiny Moon, whatever you want to call me. Today we're going to be talking about the third flame bomb build Inquisitor. Now why Inquisitor? What makes the Inquisitor so special? The Inquisitor is a tank, and when I say tank, I don't mean a tank in like other MMOs where you're a glorified punching bag for the enemy. No, you are a machine of war. An indestructible killing machine, creating widows and orphans wherever you go. The strength of the third flame bomb build Inquisitor is that the damage scales off your maximum HP, meaning the tankier you get, the more damage you will do. This makes you an ideal solo class for people who have no friends, because you're tanky enough to shrug out most attacks and have enough damage to take down toughest opponents. You may not deal the highest damage per second. But you deal more than enough damage to take on all content in the game solo. This includes custom content on Shining Moon like Hell Difficulty or Fortessa Dungeon. Now, what is this third flame bomb exactly that the build is focused on? As we can see here, the build scales off 20% of your max HP as bonus attack per hit into a series of 3 hits. This is a fairly nice 7x7 AoE as well. It's not the biggest, but it's better than nothing. However, you may have noticed can only be used when third exorcism flame is active. What does this mean? Well, uh, let's just jump ahead into the con of the build. The third flame bomb build is a three hitter combo, meaning you're going to be using first brand into second flame before being able to use third flame bomb. If you're looking for a class that spams a single button like aim bolt with drool running down your face for three hours straight, then this isn't a class for you. Another big downside is the build requires a series of buff before you're able to use the skill. And a final downside is farming with this skill slow because you need 3 hits. You can use something like explosion blaster to farm weak enemies. But enemies that are medium power will force you to actually use a combo, meaning big overkill on damage and slow farming. The buffs you are required to use before you can cast a flame bomb is first phase power into judge into third exorcism flame. Why can't they just make it all into one buff you ask? I don't know, probably because it makes too much sense to gravity. And they must punish us by ruining hockey space by splitting into three separate buffs that would never likely cast without casting all three at once because the first two does basically nothing without the third. I don't know. You also get a series of buffs on the Shura tree and your Inquisitor tree you have to keep up meaning this classes. Filled to the brim with self buffs. Again, if you're looking for a class that goes in and spans one button and not have to worry about any upkeep, then this isn't the class for you. If you can overlook the annoyances and the inconveniences, then welcome to Inquisitor Life. Well, enough talking about useless stuff, let's just get to the part you care about the gear. For headgears, the first choice is a Thanos Fighter Helmet LT. It's the cheapest and also the one I will recommend. You are able to find the Sano's helmet in the Tomb of Remorse instance, as well as the box required to upgrade it into an LT version. If you don't wish to farm that or it's too difficult for you as it's pretty tough instance for a new player, then you can buy for a fairly low price. The helmet is cheap. The box is only around a hundred million maybe, which is very affordable. The helmet itself doesn't look too impressive until you realize you can enchant it. Getting the fighter enchant on it will grant you bonuses based on the upgrade of your Thanos AD weapon. We'll get more into that later. This helmet gives around 75% HP if you're a combo with your weapon. And as for the other enchant, if you're on Niflheim, expectation is the highest damage. On Helheim or other servers, you can get attack or melee enchant or diamond HP percent for survival. 
To get the enchant for this, you need to farm Ghost Palace for gray pieces and enchant tickets from the Instance Coin NPC. The second hat is the Temporal Circlet. I will highly suggest you pick the Sano's Fighter Helmet, but this is mainly a Niflheim Helmet because how powerful Luck 3 Jewel and Expectation is. Before we get too far, if you're playing on Niflheim on Shiny Moon Aro, your skills is a built-in custom crit chance that uses your base crit rate and deal a 20% bonus critical damage. What does it mean for Niflheim players? Well, it means Lux 3 and Expectation does a crap load of damage for everyone, not just class with innate crit scaling their skills. However, this comes with a trade-off of HP% percent compared to the other helmet, or you can go to HP% percent route and it'll end up being comparable to the other helmet, but it's also more expensive. And trying to get these enchant on the circlet is more painful than sticking your dick in a toaster. But for some reason, Niflheim is filled with these masochist CBT fetishes and just plain perlish. If you don't know what CBT means, don't look it up. As for card choices, if you want HP percent, Melted Pouring. If you want more damage, any attack percent will work. Again, this is preference and depends on your gear and stats what is better. Test around and see what's better for you. As for middle head gear, if you are Niflheim or Cerberus IRO JR gear, you will have a lot of choices. Hellheimers, the first middle head gear is Seraphim Coronet. It has a lot of fly attack and is a very powerful item. It does have the downside of getting 120 base int, but the damage trade off is very good. Another head gear is the Gambler seal combo. This is quite a lot of crit damage, crit rate, attack speed, with a trade off 120 luck. Usually, this is overkill. And Asmodeus Wings is another middle headgear to check out. It has 10% attack, 15 defense, and a socket. While it's not very strong by itself, if you have something like an MVP card, this is the half for you. And for Hellheim players, I don't know, just get a bow processor or something, I don't care. As for where to get these items, the Seraphim Coronet and the Gambler Seal are both world boss items. You can get them from killing world bosses. Or you can use the coins to buy them yourself. For the battle processor, you can get it from Rudus Field 4. And Asmodeus Wings, you can craft it at the craft the exchange NPC. You will need to grind about a thousand round feathers from Hazy Force, which is really long and tedious, but it's not very hard. Don't worry about it. For lower headgear, if you're on Niflheim, you have the strawberry. It has flat HP and 2 VIT, which is very good for scaling up your tankiness. You can craft this on the exchange NPC for Sarah's memory. And for both servers, you have the blue ninja mask, which is 5% melee damage. It's not that bad. It drops it in face worm nest. And finally, you have the leaf. It's the best of both worlds. It doesn't matter what stat you have on the leaf. You just want it for the enchant. You can get attack, P attack, HP percent. If you're going to HP% percent route and you're on Niflheim, I would suggest getting the Strawberry because your flat HP will end up adding more HP than the percentage. For the weapon, I recommend the Thanos Knuckles AD. It's pretty easy to get and it combos with Thanos Fighter Helm LT. To get this weapon, you have to buy the Thanos Knuckles with great pieces you farm from Ghost Palace. It's a very easy instance to do. Afterwards, you have a Thanos Reform box, which is also from the same instance. One thing of note, if you're on Niflheim, or a server with limited enchant radium, then you can get this weapon to 20 before using the Reform box, which will let you keep the 20, plus 20 AD version. This combos very well with the headgear, giving you a massive amount of HP percent. You can also further enchant the weapon using enchants you buy with great pieces. The preferable enchant is boss damage percent or attack, or if you don't have a Drake card uh, size nullification. If you're not using the combo, you can use the Rain Knuckle. But this is very expensive. It, it's not very good, and I wouldn't recommend going this route. Hero LT weapon are probably the most expensive item in the game. As for cards, you want the Contaminated Wanderer for the highest damage. And then a white knight card to combo with your Kalatisberg knight combo for your shield. You don't want two because the combo only applies once, so it's a damage loss after the first card. Garment. Not my choice here, 
The best in slot is Pirate Captain's Coat for Niflheim. It has a lot of attack, crit damage, C rate, and all that stuff. And if you happen to have the Drake MVP card, it also has a lot of damage, a lot of crit rate, everything. You can get it from the Water Garden. And if you can't afford the Captain Coat, just use a Temporal Mento. It doesn't matter, strength, agility. Don't need to upgrade too far. You can get the Mentos from Old Glass Time. And for the cards, you want a Happiness Giver. This is your best in slot and it gives 10% attack, but will combo with Mistress of Shelter to give 15% attack per 40 base strengths. Best in slot armor is a nebula armor and power. Nothing else comes close to this item's power level and has a massive amount of damage and can be enchanted to add even more. You can get this item from Constellation Tower. It's a very high level instance, so don't go soloing early on. It can also enchant it with Meteor Powders from the same instance. What you're looking for here is a Star Cluster of Power 3. It will cost you a lot of money, so consider hanging on to Power 1 or Power 2 until you can afford it. All the Edeldust you ever farm should go into this item as it's probably the biggest upgrade you can get early on with grading. If you can't afford this armor yet, you can use a placeholder like a Sultane or automatic armor and as for the card you want a mistress of shelter this combos nicely with your happiness giver best in slot for the shield on Niflheim the phoenix shield the description in the game is wrong but on divine pride and in the code it says each upgrade gives three percent hp instead of per three refine so at plus 20 you're looking at around 60 percent hp it also throws a nice 15 percent melee damage for you you can get this by crafting it at the exchange NPC for materials found in the lava basin. It's a pretty easy item to farm and it's probably one of the biggest upgrades in damage for your character. Alternatively, you can use the Mad Bunny LT. If you don't have access to JR gear, it has quite a lot of stuff as well. It's generally a very good shield, it has attack speed, it has crit rate, it has uninterruptible cast. A pretty good damage reduction and you can also enchant it. It's not going to be as powerful as the Phoenix Shield but it's a very decent shield. You can get this from the Instant Coin NPC. The Mad Bunny needed to craft this from the cash shop for 5,000 cash shop points. If you don't have the Moon Coins to exchange, consider buying off another player. It's not very expensive as well. The card here you want is Gladys Dark Knight to combo with your White Knight. One pair of boots stands far above the others and it's the unknown boost of life this is your best in slot with the hp gear you have getting an additional 225 vitality is a massive amount you're looking at around 400,000 more hp this also translates to a massive amount of damage you can get this item from airship crash instance the quest gives pitiful amounts of stones one for 100 kills, two for 200 kills, and three for 350 kills. If you run this in hell, you can get twice the rewards, but it's also twice as difficult to do. The MVP can be spawned once you collect 55 stones, and it should be pretty difficult to kill. I was already fairly geared, so it wasn't, wasn't much of a challenge for me, but newer players might have trouble. I would suggest getting friends to suffer with you through this that or bite off other players to enchant the boost you have to trade in 17 stone for enchant item which will randomly give you something it's not super important but getting HP percent and flat HP is pretty nice it's annoying but it's something at least also do not try to buy this boost with 185 magical stones it's not worth it if you can kill the boss with 55 stones, you can get every single pair of boots at the same time for each friend you have in a party. Again, bring friends. Just tell them it's for the better bit of the guild. <laughs> or if you have no friends, supplement friendship with money. Just buy the pair off somebody else. Really. Get those boots. As for cars here, Arena iPhones give 7% attack and 7% attack speed. It's the best in slot card. 
However, if you want more HP, you can use any kind of HP card you want. Green Ferris is the one that gives the most because it gives VIT as well. For accessories, the best in slots the Star Seal of Power. It combos his armor and adds quite a bit of damage for the base stats. It can be further enchanted with two good enchants. Warning, this is a very expensive item. If you're planning on getting the perfect enchants, I will instead focus on getting at least Metal 5 or Vital 5. Metal gives more damage, Vital gives more tank. Getting the perfect enchants here is just not realistic. So please be reasonable and stick to good enough. You can craft this with materials from the Constellation Tower. On Niflheim, you also get choices of GRO accessories. Blaze and White Magic Ring has 15% HP on the left slot, which works well with so Star Seal, which is on the right slot. You can get this from the Bio 5 um, Lord Knight MVP, I don't know what it's called again. There's also the Half Dragon Princess Ring, which has 15% all stats and 15% attack speed. This is actually a very strong ring. Please consider getting this if for any class that wants stats. With 15 vit, you're adding more HP than 15% HP from the Blaze and White Magic Ring. You can craft this ring from the Exchange NPC. You need to farm Abyss Lake 4 for a while. It's a little rare to get the Dragon Bones, but it's not that hard. Other than that, you can use whatever other attack accessory you have, like your token, hero badge. Really not much choice for accessories here. As for the cards here, Void Mimic card on Niflheim gives the most damage. If you want tank or you're on Helheim or something, any HP percent card is good. Mm, Broken Cleaner is a good choice for strengths and HP percent. Whew, we're halfway done. Alright. We'll get through the costume really quickly since this is Sniffle I'm only. Upper costume. You want flat HP. As close as 5,000 as you can. Again, reason we don't get HP percent is because we have so much HP percent already. Getting flat HP is better. At 5,000 HP, it's much better than 10% HP. For middle costume, you want double crit damage. You want to get close as 15 as you can for both of them. And for the certain Chan, you want to get close as 10p attack as you can. Bottom costume, this one's up to you. You can use flat crit rate, attack speed after cast delay, whatever you want. Fill in your missing stats. I went with crit because I have one luck and this was enough for me to hit 120 crit rate. As for the certain chant, you want C rate, as close as 10 as possible. As for the garment costume, the stats here aren't that big. You can have whatever you want. It's mostly the element. I will highly suggest getting at least a darker undead element. You can swap the costumes around based on the element of the enemy you are facing. There are a lot of dark element spells or attacks that are Dangerous and holy is also a good choice because of Grand Cross. If you want a general use one, um, Ghost is nice because it reduces basic damage from enemies. The costumes themselves don't have stats, so dress up as much as you like. To enchant the costumes, you have to talk to a vendor NPC and select the special enchant option. There you can spend some money and or enchant stones to enchant your costume. The first slot can be transferred to a costume with two or more enchants. Instead of re-rolling the first slot, you can just move it over. And the third chance is third enchant is tied to your second enchant. So if you re-roll your second enchant, it will also affect the third, so it gets pretty pricey getting a good costume. As for costume stones, there are two sets. One is clean and organized, the other is messy and disgusting to look at, but actually better for damage. For Helheim, you want to get melee stone for upper, middle, and lower. And for garment, you want melee physical attack. And for dual stone, you want the melee stone. These can all be found in the MVP ladder. Now, Niflheim. 
This is going to sound weird. You're going to get an assassin cross stone number two for upper, and a guillotine stone number two for your garment. Before you go, what the f are you smoking? Look, for some reason, using these two stones will give you 30% crit damage and 5% attack. We don't end here. For middle enchant, you want a sure stone middle, which will add a decent 10% attack. And for the lower, you can use a melee stone for 3% attack. As for dual stone, you get the melee dual stone, which you get 4% base attack. Shadow gear is fairly straightforward. The first set you want is full penetration. The work is a pair of earrings or pendants or body and boots. You cannot mix boots and pendants, for example. Full penetration gives you defense ignore, which will potentially double your damage on high defense enemies. You can get these from Kachua keys or you can just buy it from other players. For the set that isn't using full penetration you will get maximum mammoth. This is very expensive but it has a lot of damage 32% for a full set and a little bit of HP. You can get this from Kachua keys as well or you can just buy it from another player. It's quite expensive when you buy from other people though. Uh, for weapon and shield, there's two choices here. Durable is the most damage. And power is a little weaker, but if you already have a power set up from another class, you can just use theirs. Doesn't matter, it's fairly minor. All of the shadow gear can be enchanted as well. You can get these books from MVP the ladder. It's very expensive. I think People were selling it for like 9 to 10 million each book. But it's actually pretty easy to get if you just farm MVP ladder. It's pretty quick to do. I think I spent around potentially like 500 million worth of books. And well, I haven't gotten shit as you can see. And this concludes the general gearing part of the guide. I'm going to be showing some gameplay while I answer some questions that have been asked or. I've asked before a random question I've seen on Discord. If that bores you, then you can just end my guide here. And thanks for watching. If you've got anything wrong in the guide or there's something you think you can improve on, feel free to leave a comment about it. So now, onto the question section. Remember, don't take what I say too seriously, but everything I say is true. Question What traits do I add? If you're using the POW Nebula, you're going to add at least 90 POW, no question. You're going to need that to maximize your damage. Adding more power gives more P attack, which boosts your damage, so it's a no-brainer to max it out. Now here comes the difficult part. On Niflheim, since we can crit, ideally you want creative to boost your C rate up. However, realistically, you're going to need some hit rate. So if you're missing hit, you want to get around 700 to hit all endgame enemies and bosses. Anything less, you have a lot of issues. You can counter that with food and other stuff, but otherwise you're going to need con. Con has two hit per point, so fill in whatever you can to reach a comfortable hit chance. And then fill the rest with creative. Question: Do I use Tiger Cannon? No. With the most recent patch, the cooldown third flame bomb is reduced to one second. This means you have absolutely no downtime on the skill and can safely spam third flame bomb. Question, what order of gear should I get? Well, first thing you should get is the Sano's Knuckles. It's super easy to farm and it's your highest damage improvement. Next, get the Thanos Helmet LT. It will combo with your Thanos Knuckle AD. And then start working on your Nebula Armor. You want to get that graded to A as soon as possible. Afterwards, you can get whatever you want. Get the boots, get the captain skill, your accessory. Actually, get your accessories last. Shadow gears, then accessory. Question Nif or Hell? Oh no, not this question again. Well, I will tell you. I think Niflheim is superior in every way. Not only do we have access to JRO gear and IRO gear. You also get access to building after cast delay reduction and custom crit scaling for skills. 
And with all the extra items, it enables a lot of builds that aren't possible in a pure KRO experience. Casters are extremely shafted on KRO. Here we have GRO accessories that push casters to a comparable level. For example, Ring of Pazuzu, buffs Chain Lightning and Christmas Rock builds. The Fiend Shield and Cardui Years enables the Comet Warlock build. I made a guide for that already, although it's slightly outdated now. Rune Greaves and Asmodeus Wings allows 100 Spears and Ignition Break builds to work with current gear. And there are gears even for, uh, well, Royal Guards, like, I guess they have builds. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Don't listen to what those Carol purists say, they're the vegans of our own. But no, truthfully, uh, a lot of people join Helheim because of the beer numbers, although it's only by a very small amount. Niflheim still has parties and group play, and you get access to all the cool stuff. Join us! Question, what are the ideal MVP cards? In order of power, Taoganka is a very good card to get, although you cannot use your happiness to give her combo anymore. The damage increase is actually better, not to mention all the extra HP you get. This also works well with your boots, buffing it to incredible amounts. Next up is a Drake card, it's also a very cheap card, and gives a lot of C-rate, your Captain Code combo. Defensively, a Golden Thief Bug card is a good choice, because it protects your buffs from dispels as well, protects you against all magic. Most of the more dangerous things in this game is magic, so just having this card with your big HP pool means you rarely are ever in any danger. And if you really have FU money, then the Shura Bio 5 MVP card is good. Then there are the small incremental increases with other MVP cards that aren't very important. I mentioned the big ones and yeah, most of them are pretty easy to get. Minus one. You know which one. Question, can I do more than 2.1 billion damage? Short answer, no. Long answer, do custom content. You see, us Inquisitor, we have so much giga chat energy that if gravity doesn't limit our powers, we will break the game. No, in actuality, it's because of the limitation of the game engine. You can only deal a max of 2.1 billion, same for the amount of money you can hold in your bank. Well, you can only deal 2.1 billion, your damage could be as high as 4 or 5 billion. Sounds like they should fix the engine, right? Well, not if the player base is a bunch of 30 year old boomer men who doesn't care about modern day quality of life changes. If you look at something like Lost Ark, you can see what an updated refining system looks like. Unfortunately, everyone is too busy sucking the run teed of gravity, hoping for one more chance to taste that refinement high. Not realizing breaking gear and downgrading gear is an outdated concept. You might be asking why am I still here? Well, Everything I said is the truth. Alright, back into the damage discussion. Uh, if you're looking at just dummy DPS, you're not going to do a lot of damage since our attacks are quite slow. For example, you see a bunch of these um, wee bass players shooting off their massive dummy DPS. You might start feeling inferior to them. But remember, in custom content, it's like taking off our training weights. A real damage can come through, and then all these wee players. They die from the monster just looking at them, so they need us giga chads up front soaking up the damage while they hide in the back and throw their kunais or play with their penis girl figurines and body pillows or whatever the hell weebs like to do. We, we will still probably lose in damage, but it, it won't be in such a landslide. Question, where do I farm money? Well, if you're into instances, Sarah memory is fast and easy. Pick up everything and sell the food. Horror Toy Factory is also a good one. It's a little long, but it's great money. Kill the ghosts and get golden platinum bars. Also sell the food food there for extra cash. These two places produce raw zenny, meaning you just sell to NPC and get money get poof into existence. This route is limited by number of characters. If you have a lot of characters, farm instances. There are also maps that people enjoy farming at. Gefenia during Gramp is a very popular one. Tegdan is always popular, but prepare to fight people over it. These depend more on your killing speed. If you have a farming character or not, and how much zenny per minute you can get. 
you can also farm items and to vend and sell to other players. I can't go into details, you have to check the market yourself. Crafting materials are always in demand, so that's a good way to get some money. I usually go through the instance route because I have a lot of characters. Okay, this is getting ridiculously long by now. I, I think I'll just end it here. I hope you enjoyed my guide. Uh, I enjoy making it as well as playing my Inquisitor. Hopefully, you see something interesting and you can join the Inquisitor Club because I feel like this class is severely overlooked in power. Not many people play it for some reason. And I just, I hope people do play it. It's a really strong class, just nobody is playing it, I don't know why.